Today we're going to be looking at the build process of the GC Ultimate and this is the final revision of the prototype. So the first thing we can do is just um, let's take a closer look at the PCB. This thing is packed. Uh, the initial comments I've gotten, uh, a lot of people really like the design. I, I love the design personally. That's why I've settled on this. Say, move these buttons, move these middle buttons. Uh, there's not exactly a ton of room. And this is kind of design requirements I've set for myself is trying to keep assembly as much as possible on one side of the board. It does simplify things a lot for production. If we go to the back. There are a couple things, but it's, it's very minimal. Hopefully you can kind of see that. A couple other things to note as well. Right now, these paddles, I just have them soldered poorly because I did that but the final version will be something like this with this JST connector so all you have to really do is just plug that in and that allows you to swap the kind of paddles that you're using as well you need to replace this part there's no soldering or if you want to replace it with uh, one of these mechanical triggers you'll be able to swap that in without any hassle. Some other things that we can cover. These are the new Golikit TMR sticks. So these are a little bit different compared to their typical Hall Effect sticks. These are a little bit more precise. I've also found that they're a little bit less noisy, which is a great thing. Got these contact pads that I've designed to be extra low resistance and have the most contact area when you push a button. We got a new dual rumble circuit. So there's two separate haptic driver circuits and both of these signals are fed independently. So in the case where you would typically have like two Joy-Cons and both of those are getting two different effects, you'd be able to get that here as well. Before we get into the final part of this board, I want to talk, touch up on these analog sliders. Some people have asked, you know, why not Hall Effect sticks or uh, Hall Effect sensors rather for these sliders? There's really not anything in this package that wouldn't cost tens of thousands of dollars to develop potentially and create. Another thing that's really important is the compatibility with original parts. We're kind of constrained in what we can do here in this space. A solution I've come up with that I think people will rather like is this kind of modular design. So these are Milmax press fit inserts. These are typically used for like keyboard switches and things like that. Um, there is a little bit of a profile sticking out, but in this case, it's acceptable. Um, and the idea is to have these Milmax inserts on the main board so that if you got some more expensive versions of these sensors or you got a sensor that you really like or you need to swap this out because it's starting to drift or whatever, really it's just a push and pull kind of game. So you just press fit that on and it's, you know, people also ask like, why not do this for the analog sticks? And it's because of the, the way that you might be pushing and pulling on that. It's not really good for those inserts. It's not mechanically sound, but for something where it's just moving laterally like this, it's perfect. So that will be integrated into the final version that you will get from the Kickstarter. And so let's move on to the assembly and show you a little bit of the shell. And one of the things that I've done, I made sure that there's clearance for these connectors. And the other thing I've done is I've added some holes. These are just little Torx T6 screws. And that threads into the rumble bracket. If I can actually get that on there. So that kind of screws in and that will hold the bracket firmly in place. Now here's the front shell and I'm going to go ahead and address one thing right away. It's this split D-pad. When you see this, you either are relieved or you absolutely hate what you see. And that was kind of the expected reaction with this. The, most people, when they think about the split D-pad, they're thinking about something like the PlayStation D-pad, which is not very good. That is not a proper split D-pad. The closest thing I can compare this to is kind of like if you're using Joy-Cons, 
And I think what made it click for me in the first place was playing Mario Maker or just some of the classic NES games using Joy-Cons with that kind of split D-pad design. And I realized just how much more precise it could be, especially when you get to this smaller size. And just in case anyone is curious, yes, you can take an original D-pad and just throw it in there. You can use the original membrane if you want. And that will work just fine. So if you are really concerned about something like this, that works perfectly fine. But that's not all. And for this build, I am going to be using original buttons just to kind of show you what that looks like because I've already shown the split D-pad. Original buttons are just, are just drop in as well. So if you got the buttons that you really like, those all just fit. We've got a little light pipe piece here for the status LED. That kind of shows you the player number. That's more of a press fit. And then we've got these other kind of menu buttons. These are resin printed. They're kind of ugly, but they've got this nice incline to them, which matches the incline of the top of the shell. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in and then we can move on to the rest of the assembly. While those buttons are in place, we can go ahead and put these membranes on. I'm actually gonna use the OEM membranes just to show. We will include the transparent membranes for the purpose of the LEDs, but I just, I'm doing this to demonstrate that these original parts are a perfect fit. Before I put that main board in, the other thing I'm gonna show you, those HD rumble connectors. We're gonna go ahead and plug those in. So, excuse me if it's a little blurry. So we can just make sure everything fits like it's supposed to. And for these Rumbles. There's a little gap. These are designed to fit in. And I've also wrapped some material around the HD rumble motor to also kind of hold the wires in place. And these are the same exact actuators that are used on Joy-Cons. So you could easily get replacement parts. I'm putting these both with the foam side up. And now um, you could install two screws to hold this main board down. I'm not going to this time. I don't need to necessarily for this install. Sometimes it can make it a little easier, but I'm, I'm gonna go without this time. And then before we move too far forward, I wanna make sure the battery works. I can just plug this in. We can see the light flashing indicating that it is working. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug that. It's a little subboard. it's very simple. It has a connector. I'm gonna go ahead and install one of these black caps. This is a standard pro controller cap. Uh, Xbox One style caps will also work just fine. So if you wanted to go that route, you could. We have a stretch goal to make analog stick caps that would more closely resemble what you would find on a GameCube. I really enjoy these Pro Controller caps. They feel awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and lift up this little latch with my fingernail. I've got a ribbon cable here. This is a little bit of a tight fit. I probably should have done this where I put this in the shell because it's a little bit of a squeeze. Probably will move that connector over just a little bit so that it's clear there. And this little stick board just fits right in. I do have a screw that can hold this stick board in place. And then we just lift up this top connector. And we'll plug that ribbon cable in using some tweezers.
and just close it up. That is the sub analog stick assembly. Everything's looking good here. Let's go ahead and look at this rear shell briefly. This is a resin print from JLC PCB. They were kind enough to sponsor this specific video. They actually provided the 3D prints with the painting finish for free for this particular video. I'm really impressed with the results. Just to remind everyone, these shells are fully open source. So anybody can take these files and get them printed at JLC or another vendor, or you could print them yourselves if you want. But if you're looking for a quick and easy way to get some shells or even some uh, replacement gate plates done, and you wanted a specific color or a specific finish, definitely consider them. They've given us some links that we will have in the description. And I'm also going to show a little bit more of their service at the end of this video. So stick around for that. I'm really impressed with the quality of these prints. Um, it's been extremely useful for prototyping. This looks like a factory finished part, minus, you know, spray marks. I did try to clear coat this myself, uh, which, you know, JLC does have a clear coat, but this is a place where I messed up. The part that I received was basically immaculate, and I was really impressed. So with that, let's go ahead and continue the assembly. On this build, I'm going to install the original triggers. I've got these light springs, and I've got this little membrane trigger holder. I've already got the membrane installed. All we're gonna do is just tack that on. Put the trigger in place. This works just like the original controller would. That fits in place, just like it would on an original controller. So we can go ahead and do that for the other side as well. You know, with the spring tension, that holds itself in, makes itself really easy to use for the final part of the assembly. Make sure our potentiometer sliders are up. Oh, and let's go ahead and get that battery plugged in. There's a little convenient slot which kind of holds that in place like so. So and that fits into this slot where the original rumble would go and that's why I moved the rumble to these handles. So we can go ahead and put this all together. We will need to screw it together, but for now, I can go ahead and power this off. We can install these screws. I forgot the Z buttons. <laughs> and this does have the dual stage click like you would all expect from an original controller. And that was one thing people were saying as well and comments for the initial videos, they're saying, you know, these are gonna be so impossible to press. It's really not. You know, you're not gonna accidentally press these. They're also very easy to access, just holding the controller normally. So let me go ahead and uh, open this up and I will get the Z buttons in. Okay, so that's better. <laughs> I got the Z buttons in. These are clicky, tactile, 100 gram force switches. It's not really gonna press up there, but you know, right here, just like an original Z button. But a lot nicer. There's not like the mushy pre-travel that you would have from a spring. Feels closer to what you would have with like Joy-Con, the kind of L and R, that kind of click. Maybe a little harder. gotten good feedback from these. I really like these switches. Let's talk about 
this stick cap here. So I'm going to use this extreme rate transparent for now. That is going to be the one that we're including with every kit just because it's this really nice transparent base, the nice stem and that black rubber top. It's a very nice quality part. So that's what we're going to do for that piece. I've already put the threaded inserts in there and then this has a key mechanism which makes sure that you only put it in the correct orientation. I'm going to get my T6 bit. And you can you can tighten down pretty hard on these but I'm not going to be super hard on them because these are resin. They're more brittle than plastic would be. Tolerances here are designed to be pretty tight so that it's a snug fit. And you can use the sound check. And this is even tilted at the same three degree axis that the original controller is. Got your original D-pad feel, original ABXY. So if that's the kind of thing you're into, you can absolutely do that. The only real thing is you're not gonna get the dual Z with both with the original, so I'm just using the new ones there. And then these triggers. Analog press, full press. So let's go ahead and uh, calibrate this thing. Right now, this configuration only works over USB, so you could do PC or Android. Maybe in the future we can do Bluetooth, but it gets a little more complicated that way. We are using web USB to handle calibration. There is a Bluetooth firmware update, but I'm gonna ignore that for now. The first thing we can do is we can go to vibration and we can choose the haptic strength you can hear that going through the shell. You can increase that or decrease. I'm going to leave it at 50. You have color settings, which we can change as an example the analog color, or we can pick one of the animated modes. You want to have that fade through the different colors. If you want something a little more colorful, you can try the fairy mode. I'm gonna leave it on user color and I'm gonna pick red. Cause that's what I like. We have the snapback viewer and we also have the analog calibration. So this is pretty important. I'm gonna go ahead and hit start, right? Well, right now you can see the sticks do work and they are input, but from the factory, every stick is gonna be a little bit different. So you just hit start, move both sticks around in a full circle starts to flash blue when you've got all the coordinates you need. You hit stop and test it. It is centering normally and we can hit save. We can choose our analog stick dead zones. We can choose the outer dead zone, which is a topic I'm not going to get into. We can invert the axes if we needed to. Let's get into the octagon calibration because I'm sure a lot of people would be interested in this as well because not every gate going to be perfectly made. There's material shrinkage and things like that. So what you can do, you can hold it to each cardinal and hit update. So right now this is 36 degrees rather than the degree it should be for that angle. So you hit update. Now it's at a perfect 45. So that scales properly. We can go ahead and do this for each car uh, cardinal. And you can do it for the right stick as well. And this calibration would apply to all modes. There is an advanced section for sub notch adjustment that I'm not going to get into here. But if you were doing things like Firefox notches or something else more obscure, that's where you can kind of adjust and fine tune for your specific notch needs. The triggers. So here's the default calibration. 
you can see it's always kind of on. So what we can do is we can hit start, just press and release, hit stop. Now we can test. You can see we have our analog range. When we press the push, uh, it takes the analog sliders all the way so that every controller is outputting a consistent analog value. We'll hit save. If you're using plugs or a digital mode, you can disable the analog function entirely for left or right, and then those won't output anything. But we're gonna leave those on. We have the gyroscope calibration. Just set that down on the table and you hit start and you let it do its thing. It'll measure those values from the sensors and essentially zero them out when it's in a neutral position. So that's done. We have remapping. So you can re change your remap profile for each mode. Uh, the big one that people are probably going to ask about is for GameCube. It's like, how do I, if I have digital triggers, how do I light shield? And so this is one example of how you could do that. Let's say I wanted this ZL button to be my light shield and then this would just be full shield. There's this SP output. So I'll hit that and then I will click my left Z button, which is now bound to that SP function. Let's save. And we'll go to this unique section called GameCube SP function. And I will change this to light L trigger and hit save. So now this L trigger will only ever be a full press. And this will be a light trigger press. And it is compliant with tournament rules and standards. So if you split those up, each button can only do one function and the heavy press will override the light press. But you can have it split in that way. Um, or, you know, for other games like Mario Sunshine, you might want to have that split on the right side or wherever if you're using all digital. Otherwise, if you're using analog, then you don't have to mess with this at all. You can just turn it off. And finally, there's this hardware test, which just lets you verify that everything is working like it's supposed to. Uh, this firmware still has some work to be done, but <laughs> just rumbling forever now, which is a bug. But the hardware test pass, flying colors, and you can unplug and the controller will just power off by itself. So that is everything for this build video. If you do have any questions and there's something else that you want me to cover, and considering doing a live stream or something along those lines, if that's interesting to you, let me know. And of course, the link for the Kickstarter for this controller kit will be in the description if you would like to check that out. I'd like to personally thank today's sponsor, JLC PCB, for assisting us with our prototyping process for the GC Ultimate. JLC PCB is a fast, inexpensive production service that has you covered from prototypes to full production items. I've personally been using their service for a few years now, and they have always provided me with high quality parts with an extremely quick turnaround time. Their 3D printing service now has an option for painted and clear coated options. That's exactly what I used for this prototype video today. If you like what you saw, we have links in the description so you can get started with your own 3D prints. Using our link in the description, you can get 3D prints starting at 30 cents or CNC machine parts starting at just $8. For all you PCB makers out there, JLC is now offering PCB services starting at just $2. I really can't recommend JLC enough. They've been fundamental in our prototyping process for this project and will continue to utilize their services. If you have any prototyping needs or production needs, strongly consider trying them out all of our links are in the description, and thank you so much.